this was one of the most fascinating cases I've ever seen. I mean, this is a 30-year-old with no family history of heart disease. He has no history of high blood pressure, high cholesterol, or diabetes, and he's a non-smoker. He virtually has no risks for the development of coronary artery disease or vascular disease. He presented in June with a myocardial infarction. We performed PCI of the right coronary artery. There was a thrombus in the right coronary artery. Drive-by angioplasty, nothing complicated about it. What we noted is that the contralateral vessel, the left anterior descending artery, had minimal disease in it, maybe a 20% uh, stenosis. So he gets discharged on the usual cocktail of dual antiplatelet therapy, cholesterol-lowering drugs, etc. About four to five months later, that, that mild severity lesion in the LAD evidently had progressed. And so uh, he was readmitted to the hospital through the emergency room with unstable angina. And that, that minimal lesion in the left anterior descending artery in this short cycle interval had gone from, say, a 20, 25% stenosis to a 95% stenosis in just that short period of time. So we used TVC to characterize the plaque, not only its chemical composition, but the, uh, the severity of it by intervascular ultrasound as well. For this to have progressed so quickly uh, from a minimal lesion to a critical lesion which caused an acute coronary syndrome, that there had to be some underlying uh, lipid burden that, that stood out on this case, and in fact it did. For a 30-year-old to have this much lipid burden in his coronary artery uh, was really very revealing. Obviously, TVC also helps in, in uh, guiding uh, therapy uh, from a, an intervascular ultrasound uh, standpoint. How big is, uh, you know, should the stent be? How long should the stent be? Um, you know, is the vessel calcified, is it not calcified? In the end, we found a great deal of lipid burden in the vessel. And the vessel diameter was uh, significantly larger than what the angiogram suggested. The other thing we saw uh, by TVC is the lesion length was longer than what the angiogram suggested. And angiography is, is not a great modality for seeing all of the, uh, the detail that we need to see in a vessel. So we, were, we put a larger stent than we otherwise would have put in, we put a slightly longer stent than what we otherwise would have put in, and we saw uh, with the dilation of the balloon and stent inside the vessel, we saw the lipid uh, plaque uh, virtually disappear. What we also saw is distal embolization. And it does raise the question, is that distal embolization the lipid core embolizing? We measured uh, paraprocedural MI using troponin, so we saw no reflow, we saw an elevation in troponin, and the patient temporarily got a little sicker. We administered some intracoronary pharmacologic agents and, and, and turned that around. But no question, that data uh, is, is extremely important. It's a whole area of study that I think uh, needs to uh, play itself out.